If you are a student, a recent graduate, a researcher, or maybe just planning to undertake a study, I think you have plenty of good reasons to be excited and optimistic about 2022 and about your future in general. And this is specifically because according to a recent study, there are several hard skills that are currently in high demand among uh, the employers. And I'll review uh, four of these hard skills in this video. But first, uh, let me explain what hard skill is in the first place. So there are soft skills and hard skills. Both of them are uh, really referred to as transferable skills that uh, many students have. Uh, soft skills, in essence, are uh, those which are difficult, if not impossible, to measure. They are more universal. So there could be things like uh, communication or communication skills uh, or creativity. And then uh, hard skills are skills that are much uh, narrower and more focused, more context specific, as well as easier to measure. So a, an example of a hard skill may be, for example, uh, being uh, able to use a specific software. There are currently many resources and blog articles and videos online about transferable skills uh, and usually they focus on either soft skills or the combination, the mixture of both hard skills and soft skills. I also have a video in which I show you how to respond to selection criteria, so how to draft an application, a job application, uh, in which I explain uh, specifically how to rephrase and nicely pack and sell certain skills. Uh, mostly soft skills that uh, that we gain as students. But here I want to specifically focus on four hard skills that as a student you're most likely to have. So the first skill that is currently in high demand and one that I'm particularly happy about is analyzing data and synthesizing evidence. So that's, uh, I've said that before nowadays, companies uh, do research. Everything they do, all their decisions are essentially based on research. So they heavily rely on data, on, on the results of data analysis and uh, on uh, evidence-based uh, decision-making. There are different uh, sorts of people who are in charge of analyzing uh, the collected data. These could either be specifically hired people, so people hired for a specific position in a company, uh, or they can be external uh, experts, external consultants, for example, that are invited to basically come in and, and do research or maybe analyze their data or collect and analyze the data. So there are many ways, many uh, paths to uh, to entering a company uh, in, that, uh, in that position, which means there are also many paths for you. So you can either work as such external consultant, work with uh, different companies, or maybe you're simply applying for a specific position and in addition to having the whatever skills they are uh, expecting from you, uh, it always helps to have these research and data analysis skills because then you will be a valuable uh, employee in that company. A very related skill is uh, being able to do research in general, to understand and, and do and plan and conduct research in general. So the first skill was about analyzing the data. The second skill is about uh, broad understanding of research. At the moment, if you're a student, you may not really uh, think much of it, but this skill, this understanding of research, which is likely what you, what you have, what you have ga gained, especially if you are a research student, so you're obtaining your degree through research, this skill is something that uh, already uh, sets you apart from a large proportion of a society. People who do not have this ability, do not understand research and do not know how to plan and conduct research. So, so that makes you uh, a valuable uh, potential employee or a valuable candidate. I recently had this conversation with a fellow researcher and we both agreed that researchers will be a very precious commodity in 2022 and beyond. Uh, specifically because of what I said before, everything nowadays is based on research. So within each organization, within each company, research is needed uh, in order to improve uh, overall the performance of the organization, to improve the performance of individual employees, to understand uh, various problems within a company. In addition to that, there are so many new positions, so many new job titles appearing every every year and they are based on research. There is another uh, video in which I review uh, PhD degrees that are uh, currently in demand and there also you can see a number of positions such as for example market researcher. These positions nowadays are extremely popular. I see this every week as I do my weekly uh, research jobs review for my, for my Facebook page. 
Uh, so there are more and more specific research-based positions. Again, as a student, I would really uh, start focusing on, on this and trying to consider this and, and perhaps brush up uh, your research skills just in case, even if you're not planning to, to work as such person as, at such position. The next skill is writing grant applications or applications for, for funding, for financing a certain idea or project. And this is not uh, because you are uh, going to necessarily write grant applications in your new workplace, but rather because there are so many things involved and so many relevant things in that procedure relevant to your future employers. So as you write a grant application, usually what you're expected to do is to conduct a very detailed review of a certain context or situation, which includes a literature review. You're expected to provide a very good rationale for why, uh, for why a certain project or idea is needed. And then you're expected to cause the project to a very small detail and, uh, and justify all these spendings, justify all these spendings and, and uh, provide a detailed outline of how this money will be used. Now you may be wondering, how in the world is this relevant to anything outside academia? Where am I going to write grant applications? And actually you would be surprised because in business and so many different industries, people often have to convince somebody uh, to fund certain projects, basically, to provide some financial support, whether it's for hiring more staff, for buying software, buying equipment, or generally starting a certain project, this happens a lot. In business world, this is uh, referred to usually as a pitch or a business case, and actually this process is pretty much the same. It's very similar uh, to the process of applying when you're based in academia. So it does involve some researching, it does involve some convincing of course and breaking uh, the budget down and, and outlining the whole project and the way you spend the money. So so if you think about it, it's actually pretty much the same. Now if you're wondering how am I going to get this experience of applying for funding? I'm doing my PhD or I'm doing my master's and firstly I don't have time. Secondly, uh, where do I even go? How do I start? So. Uh, don't worry, you can even ask your supervisor or you can ask your colleagues to help with such application. So I'm not saying you have to necessarily have this great idea for a project and you have to spend so much time uh, applying and planning this project, but instead, like I said, you can simply ask to be involved in, in this process. So you may ask to help with writing some kind, some parts of it or uh, to have a look at it. So, so in any form, if you gain this experience, then of course, as I said, in, uh, as I explained in that other video where I explain how to kind of uh, pack and rephrase and, and present our skills in an attractive way, uh, this will be helpful. So that's exactly what you'll do. You'll have some experience working on a grant application. And finally, publishing and presenting your work. So something that you obviously do a lot as a student. Even if you don't publish, you definitely present your work a lot even if uh, it's not at conferences or maybe uh, some other workshops or student events, you present your work to your supervisors during your meetings, you describe your work, so both verbally and, and in a written format. And I don't have to convince you that having uh, verbal and written communication skills is something very relevant, something uh, really important in many different uh, jobs. This may involve talking to clients, it may involve talking to this uh, funding provider, shaping that uh, business case that I mentioned, or providing, writing a report based on the insights generated from research that you conducted. So there are so many different forms that it may take. In any case, this is a very relevant uh, skill that that is always and has been in high demand. So this is it. Uh, of course, I understand there are so many other skills that I didn't mention uh, that are currently in demand, especially soft skills, including things like creativity or working under pressure. But like I said, uh, here I wanted to specifically focus on these specific measurable hard skills. So I think it's really good news that they are in demand. Like I said, it opens a whole world of opportunities uh, to students so you don't have to only think about academia. You can actually uh, be a very, very valuable candidate in other industries and have great advantage over other candidates. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if you did to help others find it and feel free to post your comments and, and tell me what you think under this video.